Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another developer Q&A video for Eve Echoes. For those of you who don't know, each week the developers take a series of questions posed by you, the community, they respond to those questions and post it to Discord, to Facebook, to Twitter, and I think it's in game somewhere as well that you can look up and go through these. Now each week I like to go through the questions and the answers, not necessarily just as a hey look what's coming to the game, but also because this makes for some really interesting talking points about game design, game balance, and what we think Eve Echoes really needs. Of course, all of this is entirely my own personal opinion, something I do feel that I need to keep replying and adding to at the beginning of these videos because people seem to be unable to distinguish between opinions and fact. That said, a lot of what I will say throughout this video is based on a solid understanding, not just of Eve Echoes and how it works. After all, this has been my life for the past three years. My job has been essentially studying and working with this game, but also from a lifetime of history working with game developers on various different projects um, in different capacities and so on and so forth. So I like to think I have a vague understanding of how game development works. But anyway, enough of the pre amble. This is kind of like a podcast. The only thing you're going to see on screen are the questions and the answers, so do treat it like a podcast if you wish. Let's jump right in. Question number one then of eight. There are eight questions this week. In the future, with the introduction of extra corp buildings, will you be putting those BP in the corp clash or in co-concord pass? Since previous updates, we've gotten something similar to get more players to interact with it. Yeah, good lord. We'll come back to that. And Pixie says, thank you for your interest to the game, but currently we don't have plans to do so. So, extra corp buildings that they've said they're looking to add. Um, they're not going to be putting the blueprints in Corporation Clash or Concord Pass. I'm honestly kind of glad that they're not putting the blueprints in Corporations Clash. Corporations Clash is the mode that nobody asked for, nobody wanted, but we got saddled with anyway. And as I said way back when it happened, the truly insidious thing is that they will not just let it die. Guaranteed, they would not just let it die. They would, instead of turning around and saying, actually, you know what, no one wants this, let's just kind of leave it. Because they've spent time on it, because NetEase is the walking incarnation of the sunken cost fallacy, what they were going to do was try to incentivize it left, right, and centre, and we've already seen new incentives to use Corporations Clash, and I do say there are going to be more on the, on the way. I strongly suspect that the new Alliance Tournament cruisers and Navy issue battleships will be rewards for Corporations Clash. I could be wrong, I hope I am wrong, but I kind of see that as the way forward. So it's kind of nice to see that it's not going to be Corporation Clash that we get these blueprints. And putting blueprints in the Concord Pass, no, screw off with that. Blueprints and things like that should always be tied to gameplay. The concept of essentially being able to buy your way into a blueprint, yeah, cool. Now imagine that the blueprint is in the Concord Pass, it's on the paid line only, how does that feel? Freaking awful. Don't do that. Even if it's on the standard line, what happens when the Concord Pass is over? How do you get the blueprints now? Congratulations, you have locked something into a time-limited thing and there's no way to get it anymore. That is why game developers don't do stupid shit like that. So, yeah, good thing we're not getting blueprints in Concord Pass. That would be awful. Blueprints in Corporation Clash? Oh, I can totally see that happening, but I'm glad they've said no. Question number two. Oh boy, I'm looking at the first couple of words here and I'm already sweating. Now interdictors, especially destroyers, are heavily abused by roamers abused, as they can pile the bubbles up to extend its range with little to no cooldown or number limit and they can freely warp in, launch the sphere, warp out instantly to a saved point a few hundred kilometers away, then warp in to launch another one in front of the target ship to keep it sink in the bubbles and get sniped by their long range attackers outside of the bubbles. Oh my god, you've just described an incredibly intense uh, series of gameplay play movements there in order to do that, including a, a pre-saved bookmark. Like, how are they getting you here? Especially if you are in something like an anomaly, if you're ratting an anomaly, then these guys had to come into the anomaly in order to send up a bookmark a few hundred kilometers away ahead of time, then hope that someone would later come in and rat that anomaly. That's amazing work on the interdictor behalf there. But cool, let's keep going. 
I suggest to limit interdiction sphere number can be launched, activated an area to one at a time, or boo-hoo. Like how you can't jettison items when there are too many wrecks or boxes nearby. You can't launch more interdiction spheres or activate disruption field generators when there's already one launched, activated. Basically, no. Just, just no. Make interdiction modules have temporary ship disabling side effects the same way as sinusual field generator to reduce interdictor's outrageous mobility. Okay, so tell me you know nothing about interdictor ships without actually saying the phrase, I'm a freaking moron and don't want to admit it. Cool. Limiting the number of interdiction spheres, says in Pixie, wouldn't necessarily solve this problem. I mean, it would, but the problem itself shouldn't be solved, is my argument. We'll continue to observe the performance of interdictors in battles and analyse their impact. If necessary, we'll make appropriate balance adjustments. Thank you for your feedback. Okay. Going with the usual line that Captain Benzie tries to attack the idea, not the player here. This is a simple situation where the idea is freaking stupid because the player is an absolute coward who doesn't understand the game. Look, if you are getting caught by interdictor spheres, that means you are in null sec. Null sec. Null security. Right, we understand what those words mean, and we understand that words having meanings is an important, like, foundation to society, right? That's why we got so angry when the, hey, we're releasing small ships, turned out to not have a single small ship. Because words have meanings, damn it. Anyway, so... What we've got here is someone who is clearly out ratting with whatever in Nullsec, and someone has jumped in and hit them with an interdiction sphere. This means that someone basically sat in an anomaly, saw local spike, and didn't warp up, and didn't have any support around them either. Because quite frankly, if you are sitting in a battleship or a carrier, and I've got to assume you're in a battleship or a carrier if you're ratting in Nullsec at this point in time, and getting salty about it at least, then... <sighs> It means you're sitting in a battleship or a carrier and someone has jumped in with a destroyer or a cruiser. Now the wonderful thing about the heavy interdiction cruisers and the interdiction destroyers is they don't have much tank at all. And they also don't have all that much firepower. So they need friends, which means a whole bunch of people must have turned up in local and you ignored the signs. Or more likely, you were just looking at something else like watching Pornhub or whatever the heck it is you do while ratting. I don't know. But the simple point is, you made the mistakes here. You are the one who made the mistakes in this situation and you are upset that the interdictors managed to get a kill. I would suggest taking a good long hard look at yourself and your gameplay and figuring out what you can do to not get blown up by a single freaking interdictor, right? And this idea that, oh yeah, he's warped off to a point a few hundred kilometers away and then he warps back in. How much prep time did this guy have? Like, genuinely, you're, you're, you're suggesting that these guys just warp in, you know, jump into your system, scan you down in, like, two seconds, immediately warp to you, interdict, set up a bookmark somehow, warp out to it, come back in, and start dropping more bubbles. The reason that you can have multiple bubbles on grid, by the way, is because of a little thing called a fleet battle. And an interdictor may not catch everyone in a fleet in one bubble, which is why in bigger battles you have multiple interdictors. Something that your suggestion here would have completely removed the capability of. Now, congratulations, you've set it up so only one interdictor sphere can be on grid at a time, right? Cool. My fleet comes in, we drop an interdictor sphere, and then your fleet decides that you want to try and take the fight. What can you do? You can't launch any interdictor spheres because there's already one down. You see how stupid that suggestion was and it took me three seconds to unravel it? <sighs> and this is what we waste our time with in dev Q&As these days. Question number three then, let's move on before I have a hernia. Question number three, and I've just got chilli powder in my eye. Oh, I can't read. Oh, sorry about that, folks. So I'm out at Masuna Fishing Camp at the moment. I'm cooking a big curry tonight. I made some homemade chili powder earlier on today with some dried, uh, I think they're actually Carolina Reapers. And I've washed my hands like three, four times. That question had me just, literally, I rubbed my face for a second and oh my goodness, the pain. It's taken me about 20 minutes to get everything back under control. I've just taken a couple of shot glasses of milk to the face. Yeah, I think I can read now. Okay, back on track. Yeah, this is the kind of pain and suffering that I go through for these videos, you understand me? Question number three, will there be a big event this year? And will there be an event to get cool limited ships? First of all, I'm really against the idea of limited ships. I think every ship should be open to everyone. I think that every nano core or implant, anything gameplay related, should be open to everyone. 
I think the only ever thing that should be limited is purely cosmetic skins. But again, I get that I'm alone on that and some people want that. Hey, I was here, you weren't, ha ha, I'm better than you to feel better about their lives. But there we go. We do have plans for big events and limited ships, says Impixie. Well, the big event is going to be the August 3rd anniversary, at which point Titans will be unleashed onto New Eden and probably a load of other stuff as well. However, the specific plans are still under discussion and adjustment. There's a fair amount of uncertainty at the moment, so it's not the time to make any official announcements yet. Thank you for your interest and understanding. Again, I do think limited ships is a really bad idea, unless they're things like shuttles that have no actual gameplay use. Purely hangar spinners, fair point. Anything remotely useful? No. Make sure it's available to everyone. Question 4. Are there plans to tell the AI, oh god, which modules should be activated or not? Right now it's cycling every module, which is mostly not needed since it's better to have it running continuously, like a signal amplifier. The understanding cost and operation requirement for this feature are high. It may cause losses due to improper operation. Therefore, we currently do not have plans to add this feature. Instead, players are losing their ships because of improper operation by a dumbass AI written by a team of people from NetEase who don't play Eve Echoes and thus have no concept what the AI is supposed to actually do. The AI is a write-off at this point, folks. Please stop trying to get them to fix it. Give us something freaking useful. Instead, email Google Play or Apple and demand your money back. Say that you were advertised that this would be an AI core and it isn't what is advertised at all. You will get your money back for that. That is one situation where Google and uh, all of that, uh, Apple will actually give you your money back. Question number five. What will fill empty slots of newly updated Concord Pass or will they ever be filled with something? My suggestion is AI Nano Core upgrade material. But can we Seriously go away with the AI Nanocore, I'm sick of it already. Right now they're quite hard to get. Yes, they're supposed to be hard to get because NetEase wants your money. How do you people not get this? We currently have no plans to fill these empty slots with AI Nanocore upgrade materials, but players can get them in the Concord Pass store. They want you to spend. They want you to spend. Stop looking for ways to get everything for free because you're never going to. Because this is netties and spending is the point in big block capital letters. Beyond that, the empty slots in the Concord Pass are there to actually essentially keep the rewards the same as they were last time around whilst giving them more meaning, if that kind of makes sense. The concept is that you could get, say, you know, a, a certain amount of skill points per level. Nowadays on the Concord Pass, you get them in chunks of like 100,000 rather than 36,228 or whatever it was beforehand. It's just to make it nice and easy on rounding. And quite frankly, if you're sitting there going, oh, I don't get something at every level up. I kind of feel like that old meme about participation trophies, I've always kind of disagreed with it because the idea that all millennials uh, you know, need their participation trophies, well, if we do, it's because the generation above us started giving them all the time, you know? But there we go. Um, when it comes down to it, the simple point is you're getting the same rewards just sometimes when you level up, there's nothing for that level, but you get like a whole ton at the next level. You've got to look at the bigger picture rather than the individual level by level breakdown. But hey, there we go. Question number six is written in, I'm going to say Russian, but it could be Ukrainian. It's in Cyrillic, let's put it that way. Will new types of ships be added, such as the minefield setter? It'd be very cool, this new content to ambush or defend your system. I've had this discussion made before, we'll come back to that. And Pixie says, the suggestion is very interesting, but we need to consider the overall impact of the combat environment before deciding whether to, to design such a ship. Some people have suggested before about a destroyer or a frigate that could actually put essentially landmines down, or space mines, I guess. Little objects in space that if you fly too close to them, you they explode and deal a certain amount of damage. And it's a cool concept, except for two reasons. Essentially, the first reason is the same reason as why we don't want so many drones in space. The second reason is space is freaking huge. Now, imagine for a moment that you are trying to uncloak someone. You know that you saw someone land on your gate camp. You know that they're trying to move towards the gate, um, but you've got to get within two and a half kilometers of them how hard that actually is, right? Because space is freaking huge. When you're talking 360 degrees of movement and every single degree over distance expands outwards with greater distance, if that makes sense. You know, like if you if you are five degrees off, off a heading, if, you're, if you stand at your house and you point in the direction that you think your office is, for example, 
And if you are directly on, you walk in a straight line, you hit your office. If you are off by one degree, if your office is only 20 meters away, you'll be close enough that you're still within reach of the front door. But if your office is the town over, you may be several streets away, right? That Does that make sense? Kind of the same issue here. Space is really big, so those mines need to be freaking huge to make any form of impact, at which point they kind of become either unnecessary or overpowered, depending on the direction you choose. And I was actually talking to one of the CCP devs about this about a year and a half ago for EVE Online about why this hadn't been implemented, along with a couple of other questions, and that was basically the reason they gave. When they tried internal testing with it, it just resulted in a situation where either the mines had to be so big big and powerful that they were ridiculous, or they were so big and obvious that everyone just kind of avoided them, so they did nothing. They didn't add anything meaningful to the gameplay. It's one of those really cool suggestions, sounds awesome on paper, when you sit and think about it, it does kind of fall apart, unfortunately. In naval warfare, this makes sense, because naval warfare is done on a 2D field for the most part. Obviously, excluding submarines, ships are all on the surface of the sea, right? So it's a two-dimensional plane of battle, whereas in EVE it is a three-dimensional plane, and that third dimension makes a massive amount of difference. Moving on to question number seven. With the seemingly ever-increasing damage potential of ships, yep, can we look forward to a survivability update? Wrong way of dealing with it. I would love to see some, uh, something to overhaul damage application or the defensive options we have available and bring them into a closer state. Yeah, I do agree with that. Improving defense and other attributes is similar. It can be accomplished through upgrading skills, modules, nanocores, etc. Thanks, Pixie. You're an absolute gem for saying the freaking obvious and missing the point entirely. Seriously, what the hell? So, the concept here is that ships do way too much damage now. Like, with nanocores, with implants, with everything the way that we currently have them, you can just get a battleship that melts the other battleship in seconds. Like, that, there's, it, it's not even a fight anymore. It's all high speed, just melt until it's dead. Now, the response that many people give, like this question is, so when are we going to up the defences of ships? That's just power creep. It means every ship in the game gets more attack power, then more defense, and so anything older gets left behind, and thus further and further and further away. It's why Tech 10 ships are so absolutely dominant at the higher metas. You don't see Tech 10 players flying around in a T4 slasher, because why would you? The slasher interceptor is just hands down better than it in every way, so on and so forth. It's power creep. The way to actually deal with this is to roll back all of the DPS. Yeah, and it's not going to happen because the whole point of your ship being broken and overpowered is the selling point for nanocores and for implants. So they can balance the ships as much as they like, but they want to sell you nanocores, and the way to sell you nanocores and implants is to make those overpowered. And so you end up in this power creep situation where everything melts everything and defencing go defense is going up. Yeah, there will be some ships that do stuff like that, but then look at, say, the, uh, the glaze mode on the porcelain nanocores. It's broken and it breaks the game in other directions. At this point, if you're at all interested in balance, the only th logical thing to do is to actually completely strip out nanocores and implants and take it right back to square one. But that's never going to happen, which means Echoes is never going to be balanced, because it can't be as long as they are trying to sell you something that is bigger and better than everyone else has. Makes sense. Finally then, the intelligent nanocore shuts off too soon. God, three questions on that blasted AI nanocore. I When it can't find any more encounters due to the 30 minute encounter refresh limit. Yeah, that's about to get worse, isn't it? Because we're now about to have a carrier that can do this in high sec. Sometimes I'll start it up expecting it to run for eight hours, but when I check back later, I find it stopped after only one to three hours. Oh no, how awful. Three hours, one to three hours that you didn't have to play the game that you don't want to play. That's awful. Please make it so the intelligent nanocore waits longer before shutting off or that the encounter refresh limit is lowered to around 15 minutes. Give me more encounters. Look, you're not even playing the freaking game at this point, so just, you're paying netties. You are paying netties to not play the game. Why? Why are you doing that? Does your wife know, or your husband, or whoever? D do people know that you are paying a company money to not utilize their services? 
Because that seems a really dumb thing to do, right? Like, if I didn't want to use a company's services, I would just not pay them. That is an option, right? If you find this game so boring that you don't want to play it, as is obviously the case if you want the Nano Core to run for eight hours, then just don't play. Genuinely just don't play. I don't see why you need to pay netties to not play the game when you can just uninstall it for free. We currently have no plans to make adjustments in this regard, says Impixi. Players can try changing their filtering conditions, such as not limiting to local encounters only. Yeah, they could, but no one's going to because high sec islands are a thing. So there we are. Eight questions that are, we have no plans, 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 and yeah. Netties. They are the no-plan clan at this point in time. There is no plan for Eve Echoes other than how can we get more money out of the few people who are left. And honestly, I know I said I'd continue doing these dev Q&As and trying to support this game as much as possible, but it's getting to a point where I'm not even sure I can keep doing that. I still log in and I still try to find ways to have fun in this, this wreckage of a game that we used to love. I remember back in the days when we used to fly around and have fun and do content. Now we're paying netties to do the content for us. Where did it all go wrong? That's probably an interesting topic for a video, isn't it? You know, where did this all go wrong? Why is this game so utterly screwed? And there are exact moments you can pinpoint where everything changed. And maybe I will do that video. Drop a comment down below if you'd like to see that. Otherwise, though, folks, let me know your thoughts and opinions on these eight non-questions. I do apologise if I have been particularly rude to anyone in any of those questions and responses. But there have been some really stupid questions and responses lately. And quite frankly, I'm getting tired of having the, you know, the local IQ in my room. Room, dropped by several significant points just by having the dev q a open on my computer screen anyway folks thank you for watching let me know your thoughts and opinions down below otherwise happy sailing and see you in new eden